On the broadcast tonight, a recap of the presidential debate. And Kendrick Lamar headlines the halftime show in New Orleans for the big game, as well as a recap on both men's and women's soccer teams here at SHIP. All that and much more right now on SETV News. Welcome to the semester premiere of SUTV News. I'm Ben Willey. And I'm Emily Hall. It's a privilege to bring to you the latest news this evening. This Saturday marks the first home game of the year for the Raiders football team, the marching band, and the cheerleaders. With the introduction of a new cheer coach, fans can expect to see new routines. We got the chance to talk with some of the members. Let's see what I heard what they had to say. We run all the way up the bleachers and do a dance. Then we come down, then we cheer the whole game, we do stunts, we interact with the crowd, uh, do dances, and yeah, and then we go back to our tailgate for halftime or just hang out with our friends on the track. And we also have like cheers that are like crowd engaging, so obviously when people come, they can engage in the crowd with us. Kickoff this Saturday is at 1 p.m. Come check out the team, interact with some of the cheerleaders, and try to spot some of our very own SUTV members during our live coverage. The Page Center is bringing back Rocky Horror Picture Show for the another year here at SHIP. Auditions will be held September 12th and 13th from 5 to 8 p.m. Auditions will be in the Cub Room 226 on Thursday and Cub 105 on Friday. They ask that you have 45 seconds to one minute of a song put together and be prepared to lip sync. The show will be held the week before Thanksgiving for those that are interested in attending. If you have any questions, please visit the Page Center on the second floor of the Cub. The Lurs Performing Arts Center is featuring a pairing of exciting shows later this month. On September 26th at 7.30 p.m., a modern-day revival of the iconic Beach Boys will take the stage. The Beach Boys are one of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful music groups of all time. Make sure to see the continued legacy of one of the most iconic bands of all time. Tickets range from $69 to $109. After more than four decades, the genre-defining 38 Rock comes to Shippensburg, bringing their unique blend to the Southern Rock sound. Known for hit songs like Rocking Into the Night and Fantasy Girl, stop by and watch their performance on September 27th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets range from $55 to $85. The Lairs Performing Arts Center is one of the most exciting places to be on campus. You don't want to miss these limited time events. APB has some exciting activities lined up for the month ahead. Take a trip to the Cub NPR this Saturday for some tourist bingo. APB will be giving away lots of thrilling travel-themed prizes. Don't miss this opportunity. Doors open at 8 p.m. and the bingo starts at 9. APB is also giving athletes their time to shine in September 20th with their annual cornhole tournament. Toss your name onto the sign-up sheet, which will be released very soon. The event will start at 7 p.m. in the shipwreck and will end when one team finally remains. To stay up to date on more fun APB events ahead, follow APB on Instagram and visit their page on campus groups. The highly anticipated Greek Rush Week starts next week on Monday. Join the various fraternities and sororities on campus as they hold nightly events for students interested in joining Greek life. Meet the Brothers of Kappa Sigma for Sand Volleyball Monday night, the co-ed fraternity Alpha Phi Omega for Cards Against Humanity Tuesday night, or the Sisters of Phi Sigma Sigma for stress ball making Thursday night. Be sure to keep an eye out for flyers on campus detailing other Rush Week events. Coming up after the break, Conor McGregor is running for president? We will have that story coming up right after this short break. What's going on around the world this week? J.D. Durazio has the latest from across the globe. According to military spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the six hostages being held in a Gaza tunnel have been executed. During a press conference, the chief spokesperson showed the interior of the Gaza tunnels, which was said to be located 20 meters underground. 
described as cramped, dark, and secured by an iron door. The video also shows items left behind by Israeli soldiers. Some items found in the tunnel include energy drinks, hair brushes, baby wipes, as well as live AK-47 ammunition. Hagari went on to describe them as heroes, as, as it would have been, quote, very hard for them to survive in the tunnel's difficult conditions, end quote. Their bodies have been retrieved by Israeli forces on September 1st. They survived, but were murdered by terrorists, Hagari said. USC champion the notorious Conor McGregor announced he is running for president of Ireland in 2025. In a post on X, McGregor said that if he were president of Ireland, he would make the dull errand answer to the Irish people for what they did, or he would have them dissolved. He continues on about if he were president, he would govern for the people's wants. This is not the first time, however, that McGregor has posted about running for president. Back in 2023, he posted a comparison of him and his opponent's ages, saying how he, an active and healthy 35-year-old, as opposed to his potential candidates, who were all in their 70s at the time. In McGregor's most recent post, he said that is, quote, the most logical choice for Ireland's future, end quote. The ramifications of last week's tragic shooting in Windsor, Georgia, are still being felt this week. Our nation was shaken by yet another school shooting on September 4th. The perpetrator is 14-year-old Colt Gray, who is now being charged with four counts of felony murder and faces life in prison. His father, Colin Gray, was arrested as well in connections with the murders. Allegedly, the shooter's father gifted the 14-year-old an AR-15 rifle. Along with the victims of the September, September 4th shooting were teachers Richard Aspinwall and Christina Emery, as well as 14-year-olds Mason Shermerhorn and Christian Algulo. This week, Gray's mother, Marcy Gray, wrote a letter to the families of the victims, giving her sincerest apologies for the actions of her son. Nevertheless, the tragedy that has unfolded has irreversibly changed the lives of so many. Kate, Princess of Wales, recently announced that she has completed chemotherapy and is now on her cancer-free journey. In a heartfelt video posted to the Prince and Princess of Wales YouTube channel, Kate details how hard these past nine months have been for her and her family. The royal family revealed Kate's diagnosis in late March of this year in a similar sentimental video. Kate said in her most recent video that although she finished chemotherapy, she still has a long road of, of recovery ahead. The princess also thanked the people for their support throughout her journey. Kate also detailed how she hopes to return to more public roles and work soon, but will, quote, continue to take each day as it comes, end quote. The 2024 presidential race is starting to heat up, and both the Republican and Democratic nominees finally faced off this past Tuesday night. After assassination attempts, dropouts, and everything else in between, former President Donald Trump and current Vice President Kamala Harris finally met on, for the first time on the ABC News de de debate floor in Philadelphia. Millions watch across the world as each nominee pled their case for the Oval Office. Harris was quick to appeal to voters on the issues of reproductive rights. Meanwhile, former President Trump spent most of his time speaking on the economy and border control. Moderators David Murray and Lindsey Davis paced the back and forth conversations throughout the hour and 45 minute debate. While on the topic of the election here at SUTV, we are proud to announce that we will have our own live election special on November 5th. We will break down the race to 270 electoral votes and potentially announce the winner of the 2024 presidential election. For now, we continuously await for what comes next in this truly historic election season. That'll do it for tonight's World News. I'm J.D. DeRazio. Now back to Ben Emily at the desk. Coming up, we have your weekly forecast. Stay with us. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How could you not love him? What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it.
I don't know about you, Emily, but this week it's been kind of up and down with the weather. It feels like when I wake up, it's kind of cold, and when I go to class, it's kind of hot. Yeah, and I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm kind of over it. I'm looking forward to a little bit more of that cold or at least some consistent weather. Yeah, me personally, I'm ready for some sweatpants and some hoodies. But anyway, let's set it over to Haley Glaskis, who has an update on the weather this week. Thank you, Ben and Emily. As we are wrapping up the end of the summer, we are finally starting to see a drop in temperatures. This is making for an exciting moment for fall lovers as we rapidly approach cozy sweaters and Halloween movies. Tonight's going to cool off fast now that the sun is going down and it's going to go to low 60s with a light wind. Friday is bringing much of the same with a chilly morning, but by noon you're ripping that jacket off as it heats up into the low 80s. As we move to the final days of the week, we see temps stay at a moderate 80 degrees as summer fights to stay around just a little longer. Thankfully, we start to see the temps drop into next week and stay around the mid to high 70s with a nice breeze rolling in. There is a chance of some rain during the middle of next week, but as long as it comes with some cooler weather, I'm happy to have it. That's it for this week's weather. I'm Haley Galaskis. Now back to Ben and Emily at the desk. Well, I don't know about you, Emily. It doesn't look like we're there quite yet. Maybe next week or the week after. Yeah, I don't know. That was a little bit of a disappointment for me. I am completely ready for some sweater weather, though. I don't know about you, Ben, but let's go ahead and see what's going on in the world of entertainment with Evan Pahusky. <laughs> It's official. Rapper Kendrick Lamar will headline the 2025 Big Game Halftime Show. Lamar, who has won 17 Grammy Awards and a Pulitzer Prize, announced the news on his social media pages this Sunday. The NFL also confirmed the announcement. The Big Game 59 will take place at the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans on Sunday, February 9th. Famous mukbang YouTuber Nikocado Avocado has returned to YouTube with an extreme transformation after not posting for seven months. Known for his videos of eating large amounts of food in one sit-in, the YouTuber claimed in his most recent upload caption of Two Steps Ahead that everything he did was a social experiment. Viewers are speculating Nikocado Avocado pre-recorded videos to post for the last two years or started taking Ozempic for his rapid weight loss. Warner Brothers released a trailer for the new Minecraft movie this week and it has been facing a lot of backlash. The cast will be featuring Jason Momoa as Garrett and Jack Black, who plays the iconic Minecraft character Steve. The movie follows four individuals as they master Minecraft and find their own creativity. Since the trailer's release last week, Warner Brothers has faced a large amount of criticism. Some viewers felt as though Warner Brothers shouldn't have made this movie at all. Others have expressed disappointment as it has not lived up to their childhood expectations of a Minecraft movie. The movie is set to hit theaters in 2025 and people are not optimistic. The long-awaited sequel to the cult classic Beetlejuice has made its way into theaters. Since its trailer release in late May, fans have long awaited the return of both Winona Ryder as Lydia and Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. The movie also features new characters and actors, including Jenna Ortega, who plays the daughter of Lydia. The plot consists of Lydia's return to the haunted Dietz Mansion, which is still being haunted by Beetlejuice. Critics are calling it one of Tim Burton's best movies in years. Since the movie's debut Friday, the movie has already grossed $153.4 in box office sales internationally. And it looks like that momentum isn't slowing down anytime soon. Apple had their yearly Apple event on Monday, showcasing a whole new line of products. They introduced the iPhone 16, powered by an all-new Apple intelligence. The new iPhone also features an action button, replacing the mute button, which is filled with new capabilities. Apple announced the new AirPods 4 line, tagged along with the AirPods Pro 2, and the AirPod Max line, receiving new colors like blue, orange, or purple. The tech giant also announced the Apple Watch Series 10, displaying it as the thinnest and biggest Apple Watch ever made. All of these products are available for pre-order and released to consumers on September 20th. I'm Evan Pahusky with Entertainment. Now back to Ben and Emily at the desk. Coming up after the break, an NFL superstar was placed in handcuffs Sunday morning. That and more coming up after this commercial break.
women's soccer has a rocky start to their season with three straight losses. In all three games, Shippensburg goalkeeper Kirsten Brown tallied a number of impressive saves during her Raider debut, despite the team's losses. In last night's PSAC conference opener, freshman goalkeeper Hannah Klein also had her collegiate debut. She tallied two saves in just 15 minutes of gameplay. The Raiders will return to David C. Field next Wednesday afternoon to take on the Shepherd Rams. Men's soccer entered their first win and loss in this week's matchups. The Raiders started their season with a 3-0 win over Chestnut Hill last Saturday. Senior Ashton Davies started SU scoring with a diving header just minutes into the game. Sophomore Luca Heiser scored the second goal for the Raiders during his debut game. Junior Ethan Paluco tallied the Raiders' final goal during the second half. Sophomore goalkeeper Ryan Krumenacher tallied five saves on the day, making him the PSAC Eastern Division Athlete of the Week. Yesterday, the Raiders suffered a 3-0 loss to Jefferson College on the road. Despite the loss, Krumenacher continued to make his presence known by tallying another 10 saves on the game. Field hockey returns to ship with an undefeated record. The team's last performance was a dominating 6-0 win over Belmont Abbey. Junior Auguste Garibaldi scored two goals within three minutes of each other to open the scoring off. Seniors Alexa McHulson, Yasmin DeMeyer, and Ashley Button all scored one goal apiece. Sophomore McKenna Boyle scored her first career goal during the run of play to finish off the scoring. Redshirt junior Emma Alvey posted her second straight shutout to stamp her name on the PSAC Field Hockey Defensive Athlete of the Week. The Raiders play in their home opener tomorrow afternoon against New Haven at Rob Sports Complex. Tyreek Hill was detained and placed in handcuffs hours before kickoff Sunday morning. The Stuper star receiver was pulled over Sunday morning by Miami-Dade police after being sighted going 60 miles per hour in a slow speed zone. As soon as the traffic stop began, Hill was told to roll his window down the whole way, and when he did not comply with the request, the cop dragged Hill out of his vehicle and onto the pavement. Hill was cited for reckless driving and was later released with a fine. The Dolphins superstar was able to play against the Jaguars starting at 1 o'clock and even recording a touchdown in the game. Miami-Dade police has placed the officer in question on administrative leave as investigations are currently underway. This past week, the NFL season kicked off once again with some highly exciting matchups. The NFL's first ever Brazil game took place Friday night against the local Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. The Eagles would win the game despite some late game heroics from Green Bay. In Indianapolis, the Texans took care of their division rivals, the Colts, with their new look offense. Former Buffalo Bill receiver Stephon Diggs scored two touchdowns in his Houston debut. The final score was 29 to 27. Out West, the returning Jim Harbaugh would win his first game back in the NFL behind J.K. Dobbins and the Chargers rushing attack. The win brings them to a two-way tie with the Kansas City Chiefs for the current division lead. Week two of the NFL season kicks off tonight in Miami as the Dolphins take on the Buffalo Bills on Thursday Night Football. That's all for sports this week. I'm Claire Rothmull. Now back to Ben and Emily at the desk. Up next, we have a brand new edition of Ship Talk with a cool surprise after this quick commercial break. Pride and passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours. SUTV's very own Evan Pahusky put together a new ship talk this week, but there's a catch. We tested Shippensburg students' knowledge on presidents. Let's see how they did. Hello everyone and welcome to another Ship Talk and today we got a real special one for y'all. We're at SUTV's fundraiser where we're selling Rita's to Shippensburg students and we have a special little game they can play to win one free Rita's Cup. All they gotta do is guess who's a Shippensburg president and who's a real life U.S. president. And if they get all six right, free Rita's for them. So let's see how they do. Shippensburg, U.S., U.S., Shippensburg, Shippensburg, U.S. Ah. Ship, U.S., 
U.S. U.S. ship. Ship. I figured. SU president, U.S. president, U.S. president. Um, SU president, U.S. president, uh, SU president. Fudge. <laughs> ship president. U.S. Ship. U.S. U.S. Ship. Um, I think that the first one is an actual president. I think the next one is... Oh, ship president. I'm gonna go... Ship president. Ship president and actual presidents for the last two. This is ship. This is ship. This is U.S. This is U.S. This is ship and... Hmm? That's also ship. No? This is ship. This is U.S. Did you say that? I think this is U.S. This is U.S. Ship. You... U.S., did you say that? Mm. No? Ship is work president. Yeah. U.S. president. Oh my God. <laughs> Strikes me as a ship is work president. Mm. Yeah, we just went today. Shippensburg, U.S., U.S. Do you guys have a... Ship. U.S. Ship, ship, U.S. Ship. You got it right. Let's go. First win. All right. Yeah, on the house. Awesome. I got to be honest with you, Emily. Me personally, I would have gone probably over six. I don't know, Ben. I'm a bit of a history fanatic myself, and there's only one thing I love more than history, and that's some Rita's. I think I would have been motivated enough to get all of them right. I'd have been taking home that free Rita to me. Well, there's one thing I love just a little bit more than Rita's, and that's Mr. McCreary's mustache. What a sweet stash he's got going on there. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for tuning in with us tonight, and stay tuned next week for a brand new set of anchors that will be waiting. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and check out the website at sutvnews.org. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.